a companion had an axe in his hand and just as he was about to strike to chop the wood he heard he heard the mightiest call that exists on this earthly inhabitants a call that resonates at least five times throughout the entire globe he heard Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar immediately when he heard this mighty and powerful call he forgot about the wood that was in front of him he dropped his axe and responded without hesitation to his powerful and mighty call there is no blessing he said for any strike when Allahu Akbar is mentioned and one does not respond there is no blessing in anything that you do while well, Allahu Akbar is being pronounced if you do not abandon that which you are doing and respond to the call of Allah is the greater an introspection within the body of a believer when he raises his hand and says Ya Allah, you are greater you are greater than my political my cultural, my social my ethnical interests you are greater than my problems, pains and worries you are greater than my grief my anxiety, my depths, my fear, my work Ya Allah, you are greater than my parents, my boss my children, my siblings my relatives, my cousins, my friends, my enemies. Ya Allah, you are greater than my whims and desires and everything that exists. I am pretty sure now you know what Allahu Akbar means. Because if you do not, then you better learn and implement. I haven't got time. I haven't got time for Allahu Akbar. Maybe later. I haven't got time. I am too busy. I am too busy watching television playing games, toying around on my holidays, fishing, counting my money, building my homes, washing my car, arguing with my wife about the color of the kitchen tiles. I am too busy with this stupidity and nonsense, with my selfish, foolish desires. Shame on you. Shame on you. And you claim to love Allah. And you claim that you acknowledge Allah is greater. You acknowledge nothing. How many people do we see rushing through their prayers? Chasing the dunya. Not realizing that. The one that you are abandoning in prayer. The one that you are running from is in fact the one who is in control of the very thing that you are chasing. Stop praying your prayers as though it's some kind of cardiovascular exercise. <laughs> He's over there. He always sees you. You can, call, you can think that, but he always sees you. He always sees you, subhanAllah. Hudhaifa ibn Yaman once saw a man praying where his bowing was incorrect. So he approached him. He said, how long have you pray, been praying like this for? He said, for 40 years, the man replied. And if you were to die on this path, while you're bowing like that, wallahi, you will die on a path other than the path of Muhammad ibn Abdullah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The companions, when they entered prayer, when they said Allahu Akbar, and they started praying, they left the worldly affairs. They left the dunya where you left your shoes. Out there. Abu Lu'lu. Al-Khabith Al-Majusi The Zerestrian Persian coward fire worshipper He attacked Umar Amir Al-Mu'mineen Al-Faruq This mountain when he was praying Fajr Now besides being a coward Why would this Persian individual Attack a mountain In prayer Because he knew Even this Persian Zerestrian Worshipper knew that when the companion said Allahu Akbar, it was not the utterance of the deluded. Knew that when the companion said Allahu Akbar, it came from the innermost regions of this morsel, their heart. 
It was an utterance that was strong and powerful. Hence, when Amir al-Mu'minin initiated Fajr prayer, saying, Allahu Akbar, immediately he fell into a state of complete servitude. The wall to him did not exist. It was dark other than the place, the light that shined before him. And only then did this filthy coward, who could not stand before Umar, he stabbed him with his filthy poisonous dagger repeatedly until he fell down. Radiallahu anhu. And then he stabbed 14 other companions. So Abdul Rahman ibn Awf steps forward and finishes the Fajr prayer. Shortens it. They carry Amir al Mu'minin to his bed. He gives him a cup of milk. He drinks it, Umar. And it comes out of his womb, solid and white, just as he drinks. And then he started slipping into unconsciousness, in and out of consciousness. And who was there? No other than Abdullah ibn Abbas. So he said, I know the remedy. I know the medicine that will wake him up, no matter what state he may be in. What was the remedy? Ya Amir al Mu'minin, as Sadat. He opened his eyes like a lion. Ready to attack its prey. A dying man on his bed. And yet what is on his mind? And what is on his lips? La iman aliman la salata lahu. There is no faith for the one who does not pray. This is a person who's dying. That's all that is important to him. Our beloved teacher himself, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wasn't he slipping into consciousness and out of consciousness and, and, and? And every time he regained consciousness, he would say, As-salatu, as-salat. He would slip into uh, unconsciousness. He would wake up. As-salat, as-salat. They were the last words of his nubuwa. Then you get this idiot that comes around today. And it was in the past. And it will be to the end of days. Oh, no, salat is not that important. It's not that important. Iman is in the heart. Not that important. Well, according to Amir al muminin and one that's greater than him, and one that's greater than him. No. La iman al iman la salat alahu. As the Kaaba was being built, what was on the tan, the dua of Ibrahim alayhi salam as he was putting the stones to the Kaaba? Rabbi ja'alni muqim as salati wa min dhurri. This is our goal. This is our aim in life. This Ibrahim building the Kaaba while making this dua. Ya Allah, make me amongst those who pray. And make my children amongst those who establish prayer as well. When our beloved teacher Sallam, informed him about the Dajjal, the Antichrist. He was telling his companions about the Antichrist. And that he'll be on this earth for 40 days when he comes out. One day or the, or the first day will be equal how many years? One year. How many day? The second day will be what? One month. The third day will be what? One week. And the rest? The subsequent days? Fuck our days. When they heard that, the companions, what they say? What was on their mind? What was important to them? Ya Rasulullah, kaifa nusalli? Ya Rasulullah, how do we pray? If it's that the situation, how can we determine prayer? Even during war, when the fighting is at its peak, one still has to pray. And yet, we have these people that say, no, it's not important. My heart is good. My tongue is good. I'm good. Listen to this bad one. He asked Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya Rasulullah, what is the most blessed deed that one can do? As-salatu ala waqtiha. Prayer at its proper time. Do not trivialize this. Isn't it so calming and relieving that we've got something called salat in our deen? Seriously. You know, when you're in prostration, how do you feel? Honestly. I'm talking about the, the ones that really pray. How do you feel? Well, the closest time in your existence 
that you are close to Allah is when you prostrate. So how can anyone allow himself when he's so close to Allah, let his imagination or his mind or whatever travel? What am I going to eat after this? Should I need you one, you know, one tasbih? Should I go more? Should I make dua? Should I not? This is the closest time to Allah Ta'ala. And you're, you're thinking? You're indulged in an atmosphere of devilish entities? Seriously? There is no greater treasure for a believer <laughs> than Allah is greater. He. No one can touch it. No one can remove it. No one can steal it. No one. It's yours. Allah gave it to you. You make sure you treasure it.